Today, I want to talk about using Lightroom to enhance your photos. Now, every photographer has got their favorite editing program. For me, it's Adobe Lightroom. And today, I want to talk about just one part of Adobe Lightroom, and that is the new mask that they've put, and specifically the color mask. Now, if you're not familiar with the color mask, I will show you how this mask alone can really help you define, can help you like isolate colors, enhance those colors, increase the brightness or decrease the brightness of those colors. And it's such an easy mask to use. So whether you're shooting landscapes like this image here or wildlife like this image here, this mask can really make your image pop. Let's jump into it and I will show you how it's done. So these are the three images that I'm going to show you how to use this color mask on. First one is we'll pick the landscape image here. So we'll go to the develop mode. Now you can see here, I've edited this image quite a bit already. It's just about done. But I want to show you how when we add the color mask, we can just make this image so much better. Now normally when I want to touch the colors of the image, let's say increase the blues, desaturate the blues, or increase the saturation of the greens, I come down to the HSL panel here. I have saturation and luminance. So for example, if I click saturation and I want to increase the blues here, I click on this little button here. I click on the colors that I want. And from here, I just increase or decrease the blues. Although I am clicking on this area here, if I go back to it now and increase it really strong, you can see all the areas that it's affecting. I have no way of controlling down here on the lake. It's increasing it. I can't just go back and say, no, I don't want this area here. I'm stuck with this. Although this is good and I still use it, I find sometimes I leave this section alone and I use the color mask. So we'll reset all these to zero. We'll come back up to basic. And here, this little wheel above it, see masking. I click on that. And here we have select subject, select sky, brush, linear gradient, radial gradient, color range, luminous range, and depth range. The one we're going to talk about is the color range or color mask. This works very similar to the HSL. When we click on it, you can see another little panels come up and it shows mask, new mask, color range. And you can see I have an eyedropper here. If I move it, let's say to the water here, we can see the water is a bit of a brownish color and I want to increase that. I want to make it look more bluish. So I click on it. You can see that I've clicked on an area, but it's showing that I've selected the sky, just like the HSL. But this is the beauty of this. Look up here, see color range? Refine. If I come down here and say refine, your watch now has, can you see like, look, it's going away. I've reduced it, but I've still got the sky. And now my foreground, what I want, has been greatly reduced as well. What am I going to do? Very easy. So we come back here, we'll reset it back to zero. I'm going to increase. I'm not going to refine. I'm going to increase it. Yes, there's a lot of pink now, but I've selected about the whole lake. Now I can come down here. I'll reduce the color temp to blue. So if I go really blue, that's unrealistic. So I'll just come back a little bit, make it more natural. But you're saying, Charles, look at your sky. It is so blue. Yes, I know. See just down here, we have add or subtract. I can add another mask to this mask. And this is why they're called masks, because they're like layers. We click subtract here, and now we're given the same option. What we want here is the brush, and we want it in the negative. So it says subtract. So we're using the brush has an eraser tool, and I'm going to show overlay. Here I can click auto mask, and it's just going to select certain colors. I don't want auto mask. Now what I'm going to do is just go along and just paint it out like this. I can make my brush bigger very quickly. Can you see how easy this is? Look at this. That's it. I've gotten rid of all of it. I'll unclick show overlay. Now look at that. I have got a beautiful bluish lake and I haven't affected the sky. If I say, okay, well, I want to increase or I want to decrease the brightness of the lake. Well, that's very easy. We've got all our panels down here. So we've got our exposure. So I could reduce the exposure or increase the exposure. What about the trees? Look at that. The trees, although it's getting close to sunset, we've got that golden color on the trees. Everything looks quite golden. If we wanted to make these trees more green, we do the same again. We set another color range and we click on 
the tree here. And you can see, look, it's just about selected just the trees. If we want to reduce our selection, we just refine it. We just keep going down a bit more. So now we don't have all the trees. I can come down here to the tint and make it nice and green like that. And look at that. This looks so nice because we've got some green trees and some other trees that have got a bit of gold. So you can say, well, there are so many different types of trees. Some of them had really green foliage. Some of them had more of a golden foliage. This is the beauty of this mask. This is the beauty of Lightroom. Once you learn how to use Lightroom, it is such a breeze to use. If you're new and you're saying like, oh, I can't really remember, although it's showing you where the colors were affected, if you really want to say, okay, well, I want to label these masks, I just click on the mask here, double click on it. I can put down foreground. Okay, this one here, I double click on it and I call it trees. There. This one here, double click on it and I call it green trees. There. So I know. There, I've got trees. Well, actually, this one is not trees. I could call it ground. G R O U N D. There. So now I say, okay, well, this one's my foreground, this one's the ground, and this one's my green trees. Very easy because believe me, sometimes I might have half a dozen, even more masks, so six, sometimes eight masks, and it can get a little bit confusing. Being able to label your mask is so good. This is great. Now let's quickly look at a bird photo. We'll select this one here. This is an osprey. I took this photo just last week. The bird's name is Hope. She's a local osprey. She's just was flying from one spot to the other. I grabbed a really nice shot of her. You can see I've already edited the image quite a bit. Let's say I want the sky to be bluer, but I also want to put some glow in her wings because the sun is coming in this direction. So I'd like to enhance this image. So we come up to the filters. We select color range. Now I can click here. Although I'm selecting color range here, I could select the sky. But I found sometimes when we're selecting the sky, it actually touches into the wings, into the subject. So let's say I select the, just this area here and I hold it there and look, can you see that it's not covering the whole image? Now I can increase just like last time. I can refine it. I can just keep increasing it. It's covering now just about the whole image. I can see just a little bit on top of her head here. It's also highlighted, but that's not a problem. Now I can make the sky just a little bit more. Look at that. I can really go crazy but that's not realistic. Remember, like when we're editing, for me, I try to keep it realistic. That's the way I edit photos. Whether I'm shooting wildlife, whether I'm shooting landscapes, or whether I'm shooting the Milky Way, I try to keep it realistic. This looks really nice. The label here, I double click on it, and I call it Sky. There, S-K-Y, there. Now, let's click on another one here. Color range again. Now we'll click here. We can see this wing here, it's in the shade because the sun is coming from the bottom right here. So this wing here is in the shade. I want to increase the, the shadows. I click on it. Now we can see that we've actually selected part of our image here. But I'm going to refine it because I want less of that. This looks really good. And now look, all the sky area has gone. Now I can grab the exposure and just increase the exposure a little bit. Now something you have to be mindful of when you're doing something like this, you can see in the image here, that because I've increased the brightness, that area is a bit flat. Why? Because it was dark, there's not much detail in there. So we have to add detail back into it. And when we're doing that, we're also going to induce noise in that image. It's a double-edged sword, just be mindful of that. So we're gonna add a little bit more texture, a little bit more clarity, and just a little bit of contrast. But you're saying that this is a color mask. Yes, I know, we're getting to that now. Now I can come up here to the color temperature and just warm it up a bit. Look at that. Beautiful. We've got about an even color. This wing and the other wing look very similar. I've achieved my goal. What I want is the underside of the wing over here. I want this area here. There. Now I'm going to refine it. That's it. I'm going to increase the exposure a little bit and I'm going to warm it up as well and increase the saturation. Maybe exposure a little bit more. That's it. Looks beautiful. We're visualizing that there's light coming from under her wing. Now the underwing is very highlighted. Look at that. You're seeing like, wow, look at the sun. It's just glowing into her wing. 
So we click done. So now what I'm going to do is just do a virtual copy. So that's it. So I've got two images. Virtual copy, I like doing sometimes. If I just want to refine the image, but I don't want to lose all my editing in the original. Virtual copy just appears in Lightroom. It's not on the disk. It's just a virtual copy. So now the three masks that we added have disappeared. Now we come down here, we click done and we go to reference and active. So here's our two images. The image on the left is the image edited without the color mask. The image on the right is the image with the color mask added. The image on the left looks very good already, but look, just using this mask, and it's taken me less than five minutes. And look at the amount of detail, how we've just increased this image. We've just made it go pop. And if we go back to our landscape image, the image on the left again hasn't had the color mask applied. The image on the right has had our color mask applied. I'm not saying the image on the left is worse than the image on the right. What I want to show you is even though I did so much editing in Adobe Lightroom, I was still able to enhance my image just with the color mask. So you can see with these two images how easy it is. It's only taken me less than five minutes on each of these images to turn an already great photo into something so much better by using just one mask, the color mask. Now, if this video has been a benefit to you, give me a big thumbs up, stay safe, enjoy photography, and enjoy editing your photos, and I'll see you next time.